<laughs> Hello, guys. Welcome to another episode of Balancing the Bars. I am your co-host, Jimmy C. McCallman. We have... Arian Dahlia Richmond. And... Avina Gomes. <laughs> and today we have two special guests joining the panel. The... Let me just summarize it for you guys. <laughs> he is a creative enigma. Oh, oh I, I like I that. Yeah, that's how I find him. That's how I like so Clinton Duncan, he is a makeup artist, an international model, creative director, <laughs> yeah. um, writer, spoken word oh, artist, yes. writer, the whole package. That was my favorite part. Package. Package. Like, yes. <laughs> and joining us virtually from Jamaica, today we international. Yeah. Jamaica, Jamaica. <laughs> we have Dr. Marisa Stort. She is a professional doctor in Jamaica. Professional, that sounds so redundant for it. <laughs> <laughs> but she is a doctor um, currently working in Jamaica. She's also a spoken word artist. She's a puppeteer, nice. a writer, mm -hmm. you name it. Um, she is it. And so I think she's currently um, obstetrics. I was getting problems with this word. So Marissa, just tell us, um, Yes, I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm, working I'm working in the department, department of obstetrics and gynecology. Yes, so thank you guys so much for joining us today. Um, our topic for today is art and pain. Is pain the catalyst for art? And um, <laughs> <laughs> that's a heavy topic. It is. It's heavy up here. Yes. Yes. But we're here with open hearts and minds yep. to learn from each other share our experiences and just have fun yeah it's a free space mm -hmm. and a safe space at that and a safe space so let's start dive <laughs> right in we might as well, <laughs> we might as well start clinton I, I i can start with you question okay. of course do you think pain is the catalyst for art um, I've, I've been thinking about it a little bit, and I wouldn't want to say pain is the only catalyst, but it's mm -hmm. a pretty big one. Mm -hmm. um, for the main reason that I think like pain is universal. Um, for good art is always relatable. Like there, there yeah, has to be true. something about it that reminds me of something or resonates with something, even if it isn't like a past event. Maybe it's a feeling that's familiar. Mm -hmm. That you know, I could say like, okay, I know what yeah. you're saying mm -hmm. outside of the art of it. I know what's the emotion you're um, trying to convey or the, the, the thought that you're trying to convey. So pain, sadly, is one of the most universal, universal things. The mm. dominant tool. You know, like, you might talk about love, but people got different love languages. Mm -hmm. Or you talk about taste, and people got different taste level. But pain is pain. Yeah. <laughs> pain. <laughs> pain yeah. is, is really just pain. Even so. if it's caused by something, it's, right. it's just right. pain. Like, sure. sometimes you hear people will say, oh, um, like I prick you with a pin and you scream, um, and somebody says, "Oh, it's just it's just a, a pin mm -hmm. for you." Yeah. yeah. Right. Mm. So pain, regardless of the degree, is something that you know what pain looks like. You know what it feels like. Mm -hmm. So regardless of the variety or the the variation of it that this particular artist is telling in this particular piece, you can still relate to it. Mm, yeah. True. Doctor Stort, we'll go to you. What are your thoughts on 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 the topic? All right, so I'm for so sure, sure I, I would, would piggyback on what Clinton said. Um, I believe that pain is a catalyst um, for art. Uh, I would also say what he said, it's not the only one. But pain is, an, as a doctor, I might use some medical analogies to bring my point over. You know, pain is not something that we can do a scan or a test for. It is something that needs to be expressed, mm -hmm. right? right? That's the only That's way we know somebody, somebody is having, having pain. pain. Mm -hmm. And uh, for sure, um, you find that it's something that can push art because art is influenced by emotion and emotion could be both positive or negative. And these are evoked from our experiences, right? And then we express it either verbally or non-verbally. And that's how we get art. art. So, so yes, for sure, I agree with it. 
I agree that pain is a catalyst for art. But it's not the only car catalyst. Someone said mm. great art comes from great pain. Mm. And I I feel like that's <laughs> Debatable. It's iffy. It's, iffy for you. it's it's debatable it's because then you're you're telling someone that the only way they can produce great art mm -hmm. is through pain. pain. Like through mm -hmm. painful experience. You know? But I do believe though that mm -hmm. some of the most prolific pieces that we would have been introduced to Maya Angelo, how the cage birds sing, like mm -hmm. It stems from pain, you know? Some of me in the Simone's best work. Yeah, bro! <laughs> some of, yes! Some of me in the Simone's best work, even Langston Hughes. Like, some of most of the, the better works that you can think of. Henry Matisse, the painter. Mm -hmm. Like, their painters would, like, chop the ears off. Like, they're really going <laughs> through is. the ringer. You yeah, know? to, to like, um, express. But, sorry for, like, just jumping in. No, you go right there. <laughs> <ahead. laughs> you're good. What you're saying reminds me of something that a mentor told me years ago. And she said that, we were talking about developing characters for stage, and she was trying to explain to us that the reason why people will say good art comes from pain is more a paradox than the pain itself. Mm. Because like, on a spiritual journey, mm. you really appreciate the good parts of your life when you've been through a mess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you, if you understand where I'm coming from, right? So That's it's not necessarily right. that you're holding on to the mess of it, but because you got a negative or because you got a pain, you could actually tell the story of something positive in an honest way. Mm -hmm. If That's that makes true. sense. It's true. I let you, you're you talking know? to the other so <laughs> the, the art, Seriously. No, right. So the art of itself might not necessarily be like a direct <laughs> reflection of the pain, mm -hmm. but yeah. through the process of the pain, it helps you to like see life in a different way or see a different perspective mm -hmm. or see a new way to empathize or see a new way to relate to other people mm -hmm. because it's a feeling, you mm -hmm. know, and feelings unlike words, feelings unlike even pictures, feelings you might not always have the right way to say and describe what it is, mm -hmm. but the mere fact that we're all human beings, we all have the same like range of feelings. Yeah, so that's true. If you could communicate that, then sure, sometimes sadly it comes from having to experience pain first. Mm. Girls, what are your thoughts? Beans. <laughs> <laughs> For me, um, growing up, I never really knew how to deal with pain, per se. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like I would sit in a moment and I'm like, all right, I'm going to just sweep this under the rug because mm -hmm. I yeah. don't want mm -hmm. to sit with it and I don't want to deal with it. But as I got older, I started crying a lot. I was a crybaby completely because what happened over the years, it became like a bottleneck effect. Mm -hmm. So I would feel sad and not understand it or not know why I'm feeling a certain way. And then as I got older, the only way I knew how to deal with it was, was just to sit and cry. Mm -hmm. So that crybaby phase kind of turned me into somewhat of a poet. <laughs> I don't yeah. necessarily write okay. as much as I used to, uh -huh. but I kind of fuel that pain into words to try to at least understand what it is hmm. I was feeling. Your outlet. Yeah. Nice. So after going through the phase of trying to figure it out and understanding it, I got to a point of where I understood myself better. So now I don't write, but I use my job as um, a creative producer to be able to share my knowledge and just to express myself in that mm -hmm. way and just to feel more free in doing so. So I learned how to sit with myself and to understand <laughs> myself and I'm able now to just share freely. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like um, if you have pains and you're just spattering. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so that's what it feels like. Like I'm just allowed to be free and just allowed to share. Mm. I think I think where you're coming from though, because it, indeed it is interesting, especially coming from a personality like yours, you're very reserved and there's power in that. Because people think that, okay, sure. it's if you're an extrovert, then, oh yes, extroverts. But for <laughs> me, introverts are really interesting because they have so much more going on in their world that they don't express. So it's, it's nice to delve in. But what really hit home with what you said is the fact that the pain basis, it's really vulnerability. I think the great art comes <laughs> from a space from being vulnerable <laughs> of being I, I love vulnerable. that. Yes, you're, you're and on my a real thoughts. note, it's like, okay, so when I was 16, I entered into my first seemingly committed relationship and she was an amazing artist right and i like i was in awe of her work but i didn't really understand it or, or neither i could have expressed myself as a as an artist until i was in that state of being vulnerable and then looking hmm. at myself in that state of vulnerability being like okay this is still pretty beautiful mm -hmm. and then moving up from that because okay if i'm 
beautiful even in this mess how can i be if i pick up myself and be my own person yeah, yeah. so that's that's what it was for me <laughs> dr sir i want to ask you like um you write you haven't written in a while so i'm not going to put you on the spot <laughs> but i know that you have written some amazing pieces where did you gather your inspiration from uh was it only pain or um for me um i'm inspired by many 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 things usually it's personal experience or um, from the experience of somebody I'm close to, because I do, sometimes I, I counsel and so on. So um, for me, one of the most, one of the most defining pieces I did was a piece on suicide. And of course that would have been out of pain. And that piece was truly inspired because my best friend um, had attempted suicide. And also because Guyana had the highest rates of suicide in the world. So, I mean, it's out of, out that, of that place, place that, that I created something that I call beautiful. And like everybody have been saying, you know, when we, when we say, when we hear pain, everybody thinks of something dark. Most times they think of something dark. But really out of pain, you can create some of the most beautiful and evocative pieces ever. So yeah. I'm fine <laughs> yes, go sure, um, go ahead. And it's it's both what Marissa, right? Yes. It's both what <laughs> yeah. Marissa said and also what um Ariane said. Life humbles you. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to a friend earlier and we were talking about the fact that this is not like a job at any other blessing. But being a creator or being an artist is like one of the biggest blessings you can get. Mm -hmm. I think Cause so. <laughs> you 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 oh you you have the power to create. Like take something from nothing and bring it. Yeah. You know, and bring it to the world. You can see, so right? Like, everyone like to can take it from nothingness it. to yeah. something tangible. Yeah. That's magic. That's mm -hmm. that's like a superpower. Mm -hmm. yeah. And something about artists is that we're perfectionists. Mm -hmm. And part of that pain please, process. Please say that again. <laughs> <laughs> I have colleagues who believe that perfection no, is, is something, you know, something about, about it's not real. No, it really is. <laughs> Artists are some of the it's most true. perfectionist people, and you might not see it. You might think like we might be in a messy space while we're working or stuff, mm -hmm. but we're super analytical. We we ac assess every dot, every screw, every strand of hair. Every, really like we we really are our biggest critics, and part of that pain journey is really just a journey of learning to accept the imperfections yeah. it's a journey of learning that okay yeah, yeah this happened but i'm not broken or this thing isn't broken or the painting isn't destroyed yeah. or just like there will be imperfections in it mm -hmm. but we call it pain we call it this this plan didn't go where it was supposed to go because mm -hmm. you had idea of the mm -hmm. perfect version or this relationship didn't go yeah. because you had an idea, an idea of, the of what it version. was supposed to be and art is really being able to create and allow it to not be perfect if it decides to go in its own direction because it's so worthy right yeah. exactly exactly <laughs> as human beings we're also trained to make Find things into a box and and cut oh. off the extra edges but what if the extra edges is what someone else can relate to mm -hmm. and you'll be saving that person sure. from them hearing that piece of music yeah sure. um reading that that poem you could be literally making someone feel less alienish nothing's wrong with aliens though <laughs> if you're out there <laughs> I believe in aliens. <laughs> yeah. I, I believe that art is also, even though you might be experiencing that pain, the art helps you to heal from that pain. Mm -hmm. Catharsis. Uh, yeah, and mm -hmm. if I, I'm just sitting here and I'm like, <laughs> It's like you're preaching to yourself. <laughs> but I'm like, by the time we finish with this podcast, you guys might learn about all of my pain streaks. <laughs> but yeah. I'm just sitting here. <laughs> I'm sitting here and I'm going back to some of my pieces that I wrote. Mm -hmm. And most of my pieces, I can say, were influenced from pain, whether it was mine mm -hmm. or someone else's Correct. own. Mm -hmm. And I'm just sitting here. Pause. Even if it's someone else's own, as long as you feel it, it's yours. Yeah. Mm. People think that, oh, like you, like someone else dies or someone else has pain. And you That's can actually miss, feel it physically. Uh -huh, it's yeah. not the person's pain. That's you felt it. So it's also pain. yours. Mm -hmm. There's Ooh. a connection. <laughs> I, I love that. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, right? So it was my 21st birthday. And through that season was one of my 
wildest, rebellion, mm. stubborn. Like we talk about dark and that, <laughs> yeah, <right? laughs> like that, that we was did that on another episode. <laughs> that was one of my darkest seasons. It was like the people I was chilling with, like you know me, I, I would say I'm a devoted Christian. Mm -hmm. But that thing, I didn't backslide, I slide back. <laughs> right? So <laughs> so what's so, the so, difference? <laughs> no, this was a blue shoe. Right. Blue this was a splash. <laughs> It was so, <laughs> it, it got so extreme, like I really didn't care what was going on. I distanced myself from everything that mm -hmm. was happening in my youth group, in mm. my church, and to the point where I backed like so much, your girl woke up in a, it was a near-death experience where my, f my friends at that time was reviving me, wow. right? I wow. woke up in my bird suit in a mm -hmm. bathtub, right? Oh. Maybe in another episode I'll get a tip. Wow. But during that season, I... Wow. I, I was so I didn't care about church or anything, but from that experience, because it was so embarrassing for mm. a few weeks. Mm -hmm. Actually, my birthday was on the Sunday, and the night before I was dying. But a Sunday, I had to perform a spoken word piece in church, uh -huh. and I messaged one of my friends. I was like, "I'm not feeling well. Mm -hmm. I can't. I can't make it." Mm -hmm. But I felt so guilty mm -hmm. and so convicted, and so I was like, "Okay." that had to be God that saved me from that situation yeah. mm -hmm. and through that season I was writing songs <laughs> poetry everything right mm -hmm. and then in 2019 because it happened in 2018 I you know tried to realign myself you know no more rebellion <laughs> <laughs> and I shared um, one of the pieces that I wrote with my youth leader because usually when we have like to perform special songs on Sundays, you know, we will try to come up with our own pieces. Mm -hmm. And during that season, I shared one of the songs with the same friend who did the spoken word for me while I was out dying, <coughs> or recovering <laughs> from a dang. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you remember the song that I shared with you? She's like, yeah. Hey guys, Jamie has a song, um, sing it for them. And I did. And then a few weeks after, my youth leader was like, hmm. I don't know what place Jamisi was in when she wrote that <laughs> song, mm -hmm. but I want her to get back. I was like, hello? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> the was good. Yeah. It, it was so That's good. That's why. That I'm proud to say that it, it causes us to have the name for a song album came from that piece that mm -hmm. we were working on. But I was like, no, sir, you really don't want me to get back <laughs> <laughs> But like, yeah, because they like, don't know. They don't mm -hmm. know, but it was such a dark place. Yeah. I was like, mm -hmm. God, no never again mm -hmm. i don't i don't want to but mm -hmm. it just says that Yo. as i said earlier it some of our show. best mm -hmm. pieces comes from the place again as you said for being vulnerable mm -hmm. yep just laying everything mm -hmm. bare at the table being willing to look mm -hmm. at yourself and stop running because for a long period i think <laughs> we, 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 we do like track race from our own yes. self when you can't Both. run from yourself the truth right. is and then to Moon is run till they catch till up. They catch and the funny up. part, you didn't use the moon and I the day. I, <laughs> I love that you said that because one of the pieces, one, okay. one of the pieces is uh, like, Lord, I'll no longer keep running away <laughs> from what you call me to be. Oh. I thought I needed the world, but it's the world who needs me. It's like, okay. Hmm. And it's like, you're speaking to true. yourself. You are speaking oh to yourself. Gosh. And a lot Yo. of my pieces, no, right? <laughs> a lot of my pieces, when I look at it, it was like, either where I was or where I want to, to be, be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? And that's why I said heart, heart helps you to heal. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of time when I'm, I find myself in a dark place, I go heart. back to that piece mm -hmm. and it's like, okay, this is but what you You have want. to be careful with it mm. because there's a reason why some of the world's best artists suffer from depression mm -hmm. or commit suicide mm -hmm. or... Yeah or have like eating disorders or go to drugs or alcohol mm -hmm. because you are literally giving of yourself like mm -hmm. you're literally creating from your own existence yeah. and i don't think people realize how much energy it takes to be yes, an artist and like, you can easily be consumed you can easily be consumed and then after a while if you real if you realize the way the world works when you think of michael jackson you think of amy winehouse mm -hmm. um you think My of baby. robin williams the comedian yeah. and you think about how much it takes to put art out there that people could resonate and relate to yeah. by the time you finish you give yeah. so much yeah. of yourself that there's 
nothing left. Yeah. And if every time, I, so every, if, every time yeah. I come to like give you greatness or give you something that's worthy of art, I have to suffer to give it to you. Then what kind of life is that? Yes. I love that you said that because that's why I said I don't really agree fully right. that, that right. great art comes from great pain because right. you're telling artists that in order to create magic, go suffer, yeah. go, yeah. go, yeah. go yeah. and punish vulnerability yeah. because you're yeah. gonna be vulnerable. Look at Adele making millions off of breakup. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's write. Dude, every time yeah, she writes about the egg. Yeah, but you, can be, but you can be vulnerable in a state of happiness too, in a state but of But the shock. world doesn't relate to that. Exactly. I mean, uh, the for real, happy songs sell a lot. <laughs> for, but no, that's mainstream. I mean, right. it's just for a moment. It's just for the moment. Because people can still be playing a song. It's very nice. <laughs> but what happens to most people is that they would buy into the emotion temporarily mm -hmm. and then when the song is no longer in your head or you're no longer able to listen to that poem it's like you're going back to Correct. that state of oh shucks like you know the more so that's what it is okay so i feel like even if you're an artist and you're giving to people, you still have to be able to pour into yourself yeah. and you exactly. still have to take care of yourself. Correct. Because yeah. four or yeah. five years from now, when, you're so, when your song is no longer a hit, what is happening to you? Correct. Mm. Exactly. So you always have to pour back into yourself. And the same mentor I was talking about earlier, she would always say, 50% of your art you create for the world. Yeah. But there's another 50% mm -hmm. of your art that you don't talk about, which is for you mm -hmm. and your inside. Yeah. Mm. Like, there's certain paintings that you paint masterpieces that it's not for the world. Mm -hmm. Or there's sometimes like you go to you go, perfect example. Sometimes I go on a project as a photographer mm -hmm. and you go to shoot this thing, but you get distracted because this other thing is so beautiful. And it took me a while to realize that the other thing, you could just stand and look at it and enjoy the moment. Uh, yes. You know, there's certain parts of your art that is just for you, just for you to enjoy it and not share it with anybody. Art is honestly so food. It and really as an is. artist, it, like, it's literally a part of your healing because your healing never stops. Mm -hmm. And I Best think part. in Guyana, we have this culture of, of not appreciating art. And you have young, budding artists who are literally feeling very lost. But I really just want to remind you, if you're watching this right now, your art is for you first. Yeah. Right. It's for you first. And that's the only way you'll ever be able to grow and it'd be okay for your soul to share it with other people. Yes. Mm -hmm. Marissa, yeah. you want to jump in there? About Guyanese artists or general? Sharing. About sharing, yeah. Art and sharing, yeah. Oh, okay. So I do, what I find is that even as an artist, people think that we're so strong because of the way we, we express ourselves. But... Little do they know what goes on behind closed doors, like the tears that were shed on that paper as we as we wrote. And I love that you guys really highlighted that we we need to think of ourselves and really protect ourselves. Cause really and truly, like Clinton said, this is why you find all these people that you think they're so happy, they they end they end up suicidal, they end up depressed, they end up turning to drugs and all these things. So yeah, I agree totally with you guys. Thank you so much. And that was a whoo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, oh yeah. I felt good to say it though. I felt good to hear too, hearing you guys talk True. about it. It's like we. It, it's, it's a reality that it's, we yeah. don't speak That's true. about. Mm -hmm. a lot. It's just, it's just uh, the whole world so, is like, feed me, feed me things, entertain <laughs> me. <laughs> oh my God! So that part. So when the artist puts everything there, and you, the consumer, you could just pick the song up, you click play. We have already expressed exactly what you wanted to say, exactly how you feel. You have catharsis, you wake up tomorrow morning, you go back to your life, mm -hmm. where are we going? Yes. Mm -hmm. But there's certain, I think the purpose of art... Were you going to say something? Go ahead. You want to say something, Marissa? No, 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 you go ahead, you go ahead. I'll come in after you. <laughs> All right. oh, thank you, Doc. <laughs> I feel as though the purpose of art is not only for you. So if I'm, if I'm creating this song and, okay, I'm going through this thing and, and it healed me, but then you're going to listen to it. And even though you're going to wake up tomorrow and probably listen to another song, mm -hmm. it's that feeling that it gave you that's priceless. To share. So, and I think sometimes, a lot of times, we, as people, we go into art for different reasons. And mm -hmm. the bad mm -hmm. part is when you go into art looking to be famous, that is not going to help you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not going to help. If it's True. really good art, <laughs> the fame will come. But don't, if you're an artist and you listen to this, don't go in it for that. I think that's vital. Um, if it's good, 
or even if it's bad, because we be hearing crappy songs, <laughs> the fame <laughs> will come. But do it, do it for you. And, and it's funny that the crappiness always makes it fast. Yes. I, mean, I mean, okay, not to be that guy, mm-hmm. but... But to be that I, guy. But also to be that guy. Like, I don't know if I... I don't necessarily have a problem with you wanting the fame. Like... Mm. The people would have no. the talent want the fame. So, no, I mean, so purpose I'm talking about. Oh, the I intention so. okay. of creating this you. art should not be for that. So, okay, I get what you're saying. And you know, you, everybody, everybody wants attention. I think it's a human trait. True. But it will come. It will come. Okay, I get what you're saying. It's <laughs> yeah. no problem if you get the attention, but mm-hmm. that shouldn't be your it motivation. Should, I, I don't think, okay. yeah, take no sell off like that. <laughs> but Marissa, what were you going to say? So, no, I was actually going to ask a question whether you guys think that um, it's easier to express pain verbally versus non-verbally. Um, for me, it's 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 always writing. Mm-hmm. Okay. R- writing, and as you guys said, not always having to release that for everyone mm-hmm. to see. Mm-hmm. But as I also said earlier, my healing or a lot of my healing it started through me being able to see my pain on the paper, mm. to see it in black and white. Mm. Not mm-hmm. just feel it, but okay, this is what I've been through, this is what I'm going through, okay. mm. right? So, I, I express it best there. And then probably, if I want to shout at people, <laughs> <laughs> the holler up on people, don't make it sound nice. What about you, Clinton? Um, I think it's a little bit like 50-50. Mm. Um, there is a part of me that I'm trying to grow and build mm. that will just say what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's the recent version of me. Mm-hmm. Um, but before that, a lot of it you had to do. Al- I had to do alone, and I think it's it's similar for a lot of artists where mm. you really just it's, it's you alone. Yeah. Um, Jackie Jack says a thing where she says, um, "For a man to bring a message to the people, he must first leave the people." Mm-hmm. And as an artist. Yep. Most of your good work, you gotta do it alone. You gotta be in isolation. You can't have too many other voices. Seekers, it's just gotta yeah. be you, your voice, and God, mm-hmm. or you, the voice in your head, Amen. and God. And yeah. it's really lonely. Yeah. It's really lonely. So it, there was a part it's where it was just me and a pen and a paper, and you write it out or you draw it out, and that's your release. Because again, artists, are, for me, I had to learn to use this voice. Mm. Yeah. Because as an artist. It's like when you go blind and y- your hearing heightens. Mm-hmm. So we don't say a lot with your mouth, but we have different ways of like communicating emotion mm-hmm. and how we feel. And the non-artists don't always pick them up. It's true. Mm-hmm. So like it's with, with my family and with my friends and with like um, intimate partners, I had to realize that yeah, Clinton, they don't they don't know what this means. You gotta <laughs> say it. Get it. <laughs> yeah. You gotta actually mm-hmm. use your mouth yeah. and say it. And I'm learning to do that now. So I said 50 50 because there's still certain things that I would rather just sit in my room, play my music, and deal with it by myself. Mm-hmm. But I'm learning that man is not an island, and mm-hmm. if you're going to have like families and relationship and that type of stuff, Healthy i got to be 50-50 with it. Mm-hmm. You know? All right. So, <laughs> um, you guys can just, in about 10 no, I seconds, <laughs> wrap up. <'cause> <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, I, think I, can, I can relate to a lot of what Clinton said. I have a hard time expressing myself. Because I sometimes don't feel like if persons understand what I'm saying yeah. or they'd be able to relate to or give me the response that I need. Mm-hmm. Because I don't always need to hear, oh, it's going to be okay. <laughs> like, sometimes I just want to cry. Mm-hmm. Just let me cry and be by right. myself. <laughs> yes. yeah, right. So I think over the years, my family has come to understand that. But they have their own subtle ways of where they'd come knock on the door and be like, you good? Yeah. You want my sister? would be like, you want plants? And you want anything? <laughs> so they have, <laughs> learned, they have learned to deal with me. And in yeah. turn, I now know how to act towards them Mm -hmm. so i'm learning to open up and they're learning more about my language of expressing myself as Mm -hmm. well but yeah i I think today (laughs) was all very heavy i'm a combo (laughs) that's all that's all (laughs) but um i really enjoyed this topic the topic was heavy but the conversation was a combo (laughs) yes yes Um, Um, but Thank you so much, Marissa Stort, <laughs> for joining us today all the way from Jamaica. And thank you to Cleon Duncan of course, and of Clinton Duncan. <laughs> <laughs> and, to all those <laughs> <laughs> and to those who are watching, we thank you guys for watching. And remember, great art doesn't only come from great pain, but great art comes from courage. And great art comes from the ability to be vulnerable. Thank you so much for watching us. I'm your co-host, Jamisia McCalman. 
Ari and Dahlia Richman, Abina Gomes, and bye bye. <laughs> Thank bye. you guys. <laughs> Hola, I'm Arian Dahlia Richman, your co-host at Balancing the Bars. Please make sure to subscribe, show us some love, and share it with your friends.